I want to share this quote with you that is one of my favorites of all time, and it has to do with the podcast I just recorded with Dan Wolf. And it's actually a Macklemore quote, and it's from one of my favorite songs. It reminds me of my daughter, Clea, and it's simply this. Don't try to change the world. Find something that you love and do it every day. Do that for the rest of your life, and eventually the world will change. I love that quote because it shows how if we focus on becoming the best version of ourselves, find those things that we're truly passionate about, that passion becomes contagious and it spreads throughout the world. And the reason I thought about this in the conversation with Dan Wolf is in his book, Becoming the Change, he talks about how we do this as adults. A lot of times we encourage kids to chase their dreams, to you know reach for impossible new heights. Do they see us doing that ourselves? Do they see us chasing our dreams? And I remember years ago, I worked in a school district and one of the things in the vision and mission was we want all of our students to aspire to reach their dreams. And I actually had challenged that statement because I said, why shouldn't it be learners? Because when we talk about students, yeah, it's the biggest part of our population in our school community. Obviously, it's who we serve. But as an adult, are my dreams dead? Is that over for us? And it's just our kids? That if we want our kids to be able to aspire to reach their dreams, they should look to people that do the same thing. So something that really resonated with me in this conversation and in the comments, I asked people in the podcast, and I encourage you to do this right now, to share a quote that really resonates with you, one that sticks out to you and why it's important in education. So I thought to model that, I would start off with one myself. And you're gonna love this conversation with Dan. It's very uplifting. And I hope um, you find some value in this and really look at how can I embody that passion and excitement that I encourage for my students. Thanks so much for being here. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I'm so excited to actually have Dan Wolf on the podcast today. He is author of the new book, Becoming the Change, Five Essential Elements to Being Your Best Self. He also has um, a blog and a podcast um, by the same title. Uh, he is also currently an assistant principal just outside Tampa Bay. Uh, you know, just kind of, you know, short drive. I might drive there after. I might just get in my car right after and just head down and meet you in person. So, uh, Sounds good. I don't, you know, <laughs> looking at all these things that he does all at the same time, which is totally impressive. Um, and so it's been nice to kind of talk to Dan, learn more about some of the work that he's doing, his continuous learning. And one of the things that he said to me, and I'm going to get people to do this. He talked about, and I, I, I've made a, I've made like a commitment this year that I'm going to encourage people to like subscribe and comment, <laughs> but I always feel awkward about it, but you're a big quote guy, right? Mm-hmm. So Here's, one, here's here's the comment that I'd love to see on YouTube. What is your favorite quote in education? And maybe I'm going to ask you this, Dan, in, in the podcast. If you could comment down below, what is your favorite quote in education and why? Why does it resonate with you so much? I'd love to, because I know Dan would probably love to see the comments and uh, yes. steal some of those quotes for his own blog and, and his own writing. So, Dan, um, thanks for being on the podcast. If you can tell everyone... Um, what you do today and kind of how you got there. I think it's a uh, great place to start. All right. Well, thank you again so much for having me. Again, my name is Dan Wolf. I am assistant principal um, at Sunray Elementary in Pasco County, Florida. It's just north of Tampa. Um, This is my 26th year. Um, Over my 26 years, I have been a classroom teacher, K-5. I've been a math coach, a um, a district curriculum specialist for K-12, uh, where I uh, served 18 schools within um, the Northwest region of our county, uh, K-12, um, uh, all, all Title I, and uh, it was great experience within that. And then I've been an assistant principal for uh, like 11 years, and I'm currently in the Preparing New Principals program, where I hope uh, a year from now or whenever is, is the time is right is to uh, have my first principalship at, at, at a school. Well, okay. So if you get, okay, I, I, I would love if I'm put, putting this out here, if you become a principal next year, I want you on the podcast just to talk about that process, how you got there 
because I think a lot of people listening to this, they're in educational leadership positions. And mm-hmm. um, I, I think that would be really, really fascinating. And so when you're when you're talking about, you know, assistant principal, that role specifically, tell me, like, what are some of the things that you think would be different from the assistant principal role to maybe going into the principalship next year? Like, what? how do you how do you see yourself kind of changing it as you go into that role? Yeah. Well, first, I definitely would want to be on the podcast when I become a principal. I just want to put that out there too. Right. Just to, but yeah, so as far as I, I think with no matter what role I've held, you know, um, when I left the classroom, um, I promised myself and I would tell um, my any staff I've worked with, um, I want I want to never forget what it's like to be in the classroom. And I want you to call me out on it if I do, because that to me, I think, not that it intentionally happens, but it happens uh, far too often where you you leave the classroom and you forget things. You forget what it's like to be on what I like to say, the front lines. And I believe as an administrator, you should be on the front lines with your staff, learning with them, growing with them, going through the trials and tribulations of you know whatever, whatever comes your way. Um, I think um, to answer your question in regards to going from assistant principal to principal, I think is um, first and foremost, as a principal, I've got to also remember what it was like to be an assistant principal because right. they're the ones that are looking over the testing. They, they have certain things. I'm, my role in, in my position as a principal is to be able to coach them to eventually become a principal. Right. Um, I think we're always coaching each other. And I think it's important as an, as a principal to really um, focus on that social awareness piece and looking at it through the lens of your stakeholders, no matter who it is, from you know instructional assistants, uh, teachers, front office staff, custodians, uh, food and nutrition, you name it, because each of them play an essential role in in you know the heart of that school, and and I think it's just making sure that you don't forget that you don't forget where you came from. You're it's about culture. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a big believer in that and um, letting people know that they're appreciated of in this day and age, I, I think oftentimes is taken for granted. And I think is letting people know that they matter um, and making sure, you know, um, you lead with that servant leadership mindset. Um, my, um, my Twitter handle is serve, lead and inspire. And those are the three mantras I live by every day. And I want to always do those three things. And if I can do that within every school day, then I call it a good day um, within there. But it's, it's, it's going to be a process. I know right. that. I know I'm not going to get everything right. I want that feedback. If I'm not doing something right, I want someone to tell me, you know, um, they might not always agree with every decision I have, but I'm always going to give the reason why. Because I, right. I think if you're able to do that, I think the staff, they may not necessarily might have agree with you know, how it might have affected them, but they'll at least re- respect you that much more for being authentic. Because for myself, I, I, but what you see is what you get. You know, that's, I, I'm not right. going to sugarcoat things. I'm not going to, I'm going to do what's right by kids, by teachers, by what I can for our school and our community. Yeah. And the, the you know, the, the comment that you made about, you know, if, if I'm doing something wrong, like tell me, one of the things I used to say to my staff in both the assistant principal role and the principal role is I cannot solve problems that I do not know exist. And, you know, if you're having conversations behind my back or talking amongst your colleagues and complaining about something, but you don't talk to me, well, mm-hmm. then it's never going to fix. Right. And there is something about, I, I saw this quote. I know you, I don't know who said this. I saw, I saw it literally just yesterday and I, maybe, you know, it, but look it up after this because I, I know you love it. It's like basically um, complaining about a problem and not bringing a solutions is just called whining. Like that's that's what I thought it was a really yeah. interesting um, thing about that. Um, the one thing that you said, and I, I really want to kind of get your thoughts on this. It, when I was assistant principal and principal, there's no way I'm looking over data. That's not my job. And, and I'm not saying that shouldn't be your job. Mm-hmm. That was not my skill set. That was never my skill set, which is probably, you know, we talked about learner driven evidence form practice. You know, I'm not I'm not a big data guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of my things I was really good at was and you might call it something different now. Like I was in, like in charge of student discipline, you know, kid does something wrong. Right. And when I was a system, it was it was kind of like at the at the time 
I was assistant principal and that was kind of like the assistant principal's job, but the principal didn't deal with that. And then when I became the principal, I'm like, no, 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 that's what I'm really good at. And I think sometimes when people, and the reason I bring all this stuff up is I think there's sometimes, you know, the principal does these jobs and mm -hmm. the assistant principal does these jobs as opposed to, okay, what's the principal really good at? How does they do, how do they hire someone with different strengths? So like I, in, I, I specifically, when I hired a principal, I hired someone probably as different as me than me as possible because I didn't need, I already had me. I don't need two me's. I need someone right. who, you know, who, what, and she was incredible with data. I, I'm not doing that stuff. Right. Whereas, you know, the principal I worked for when I was a assistant principal, he was good at that stuff. So is there, you know, I don't, and maybe there's something different in, you know, Florida leadership, or is that something that, you know, people look at like, Hey, what is the strength of this person in this? Because a lot of people are kind of turned off by going into admin because they say, well, that's, I have to do those things. I'm like, not if that's not, if you're not good at them, right. A good principal will put you in a place of strength, not just say, this is the assistant principal's job, whoever gets it. So how do you see that? I, I, no, I agree. I think it, you know, what, what I would look for is just someone who would best, um, and in a sense, compliment me and balance things out. Um, because like prime example is oftentimes uh, for principal and assistant principal, when you become a principal, you no longer have bus duty, you have car duty, right? Bus duty's got the referrals, car duty. I mean, how many times would you get a car duty referral? I mean, that's, you know, that, right. but, but like for me, I don't mind the bus part of it. I don't mind having to ride on a bus if I need to for student right. behavior or whatever. And just where those strengths are, like data it is a strength of mine. But um, if something else needs attention or, you know, if there's something else that I need more, like I have more of a math and science uh, background. Right. And but there might be someone that's got more of the, the ELA social studies side of things. And I'd want that kind of balance because again, we always talk about the whole child. Well, I'm, I'm looking at the whole school right. and how to best balance things out for the support of our staff. And that could even trickle down to like, we have instructional coaches. We could have someone, you know, oversee math and someone oversee uh, language arts and be able to tap into the strengths. Um, our county uses the, um, uh, the Clifton uh, strength finder and right. we have like our top five. And I mean, I'm one that would always want to see even within our like um, PLCs within our grade levels, or even within our, um, you know, leadership team, what are our strengths? What are our top five strengths? And because again, that should really balance each other out because everybody, if they're all on one side of things, you're never right. going to, you want that kind of, I'm not going to say conflict, but you want that discussion. You want right. to make sure all sides are considered and you're not going to have that if you <clears throat> hire in a way where it's going to just complement things or do things that you're already good at doing. It's got to right. be that, you know, more of a balance. So Love that's that. what I would look for. And, and everyone who's listening, um, if you're assistant principal right now, if you're a principal, if you're wanting to go in those roles, I've actually listed, uh, there's a link to an article called four attributes of a great assistant principal. I just pulled it up uh, while I was listening to Dan and he, he knocked off some of the things that I talked about um, several years ago. So I'm excited uh, if, if people are interested in reading that, check it out down below. The the one thing that you actually said and talked about kind of helping people find strengths is, is really a big premise of your book, um, became, Becoming the Change, Five Essential Elements to Being Your Best Self. And we talked a little bit on our other podcast about um, really kind of getting people to really understand themselves through that process. And I'm, I'm a big believer that if you truly want to change the world, you have to start with yourself, right? It's really easy to say, you need to change, you need to do stuff different. But really kind of understanding ourselves and how we best serve others um, is a really big believer for me, not only at the educator level, but obviously at the student level, that, that, that's where a lot of this stuff starts. So if you can just kind of tell us a little bit about your book, like what was, first of all, what was the inspiration uh, behind writing it in the first place? Because obviously if you're running a school, you have to have it's you have to be inspired to to do this on the side. So tell me a little bit about what, what inspired you to write the book in the first place. Sure. Uh, so a few years back within our county, um, I, I had the honor of being a part of a district committee for social emotional learning where we developed K twelve standards. 
um, and uh, to go ahead and have the continuum within there. And I was sitting in one of those meetings, and I, like I said before, I'm, I'm a big uh, believer of quotes, and I came ac uh, across a quote one morning uh, by Michelle Obama. It said, I've learned that as long as I hold fast to my beliefs and values and follow my own moral compass, then the, my, then the only expectations I need to live up to are my own. And so what I thought about was I said, well, really, when, when I think of um, the, the five areas or five elements of SEL, it's, it's much like a compass. When we get lost in the woods or something like that, a compass guides us to get to, to find safety. But this moral compass and with like self-awareness being at the epicenter and then the four other um, areas being those cardinal directions, they're our own compass to, walk, um, to help us through life, through whatever we might be facing. Um, and sometimes we're, we might lean more on self-management or responsible decision making. And then other times it would be social awareness, depending on whatever we need. But everything is centered around or goes back to self-awareness. Um, and so that's where um, I first came out with the blog, and that was in December of 2019. I started taking a lot of quotes and applying it, what it means to me and those five areas and uh, the moral compass. And then from that, it came into a podcast in February of 2020. And then, as we all know, the pandemic hit in March. And what during pandemic? that time, when what, I what pandemic? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so when we had that, and when, so when I wasn't on Zoom, I was, um, I said, you know what? I want to do something more than just yeah. a blog. I said, so that's when I went ahead and wrote the book. Um, I, I came up with like a, a self-assessment um, around the, the five elements where you just authentically answered each of them and it tells you your strengths and your limitations. And uh, from there, each of the chapters focuses on those different areas and um, ways to become your best self. And what, how the book is written is it's um, kind of, if people remember the Choose Your Own Adventure books yeah. in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, this book, you don't have to read in any particular order. Um, you can start with uh, self-management and then jump to responsible decision-making and because um, we're all on our own different path, our own different pathways. And I didn't want to be like the traditional book where you had to read it cover to cover. And mm -hmm. what you, you might have done for your self-assessment now again, might look different five years from now because you're at a different point in your life. You take it again, you might have a different pathway. Um, and it's just different checkpoints because then you had, you had mentioned about self-awareness. And I look at self-awareness, we, we are the, our own mechanics. Um, we Just like how a mechanic knows the inner workings of a car, we're the mechanics of our own lives. And we are able to drive that. And that's, that's how that's what the premise is uh, within each of the different areas. Well, when you talked about the idea of like, you know, how important it is to be self-aware, did you find, and I, I guess I'm, I'm biased on this too, uh, because I found that blogging really helped me just kind of, kind of find my own voice. And what I mean by that is I was very cognizant that like, it's easy to reflect and not share. But when you reflect and share it with the world, you are a little, you are more thoughtful of what you put out there, right? And mm -hmm. I I always talk about this idea of three sixty degree learning. I'm trying to actually address the 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 critiques that I might get on sharing an idea before I get them, if that makes sense. So I'm trying mm -hmm. to think of like whose perspective, like what am I missing here? Like who's gonna say no, no, I don't agree with you because of that? How do I address that before it comes up in the comments, right? So right. it really kind of helped me to find my voice, understand what I was passionate about. Cause I, it was weird. I, I often talk about, I don't, sometimes I write to share my learning, but sometimes I write to learn. Like I actually mm -hmm. just start writing stuff to see where it goes. So right. how has that helped you, the podcasting, blogging, how has that helped you kind of a, a better understanding of yourself through that process? Well, and well, I look at look at the blogging and the podcasting, and what um, is kind of like uh, my own journaling, in, in a way. It's 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 a way to um, express my thoughts in the moment, what I might be experiencing in my life, either professionally or personally. And it's just you know, it's um, putting my thoughts out there. I've always you know, I'm I'm in education for a reason to to help others. And right. that's just what I've always lived by. And I thought that that's what I could do through the blogging is 
maybe this might resonate with somebody, whatever I might be experiencing, or even if it doesn't resonate tomorrow, what I might post for tomorrow, someone might stumble across it six months from now and it, it just hits them right. But you know, between the eyes, just they're like, Oh my gosh, this is, I'm feeling the same way about this. And this is exactly what I needed to kind of, if they're in a funk or if they're anything. And like I said, just, just to kind of put those things out there. And I, I, I just do that with that, that kind of thought behind it, that it could be something that someone else needs. And then it's, we talk about, um, legacies or things but this is this is kind of what i look at kind of like what the legacy could be is like hmm. when i i'm no longer here or whatever these blogs will be here somebody right. might stumble across them and it just might set them on a a, a better course a better direction than they might have been in so and that's well, all i can ask for and i, and I love that because i i actually talk about my presence online is my diary to my kids that mm -hmm. that to me like when i'm long gone um my kids will have tons of stuff that they can look up and see what their their dad wrote about, get to mm -hmm. know me better in a way that I wish I could have seen more of my dad before he passed away in what he thought. So I, I always think about that, not only in what I share, but how I interact with people. Um, I think yeah. that that really matters. The, I'll give you a quote. And yeah, this is one you'll love. Uh, uh, I think it's Clive Thompson. And he talked about kind of like how blogging makes you smarter. And mm -hmm. he said, anyone can win an argument inside their head. When you have to face an audience, you have to be truly convincing. It's one of my favorite quotes. Oh, that's uh, great. I like that. Yeah. That, really? Because you because it is that, that perspective there. Mm -hmm. um, so when you look at your book, Becoming the Change, Five Essential Elements to Being Your Best Self. And uh, shout out to Darren Peppard, uh, who wrote this or published this to uh, with Road to Awesome. Darren's an awesome, awesome mm -hmm. uh, person. And I know Absolutely. he does keynotes and stuff like that. So he's uh, uh, someone I... Uh, really appreciate it. I've had some great interactions with him in my life. I know that you talk a lot about, you know, kind of educators finding themselves, their own voice through that process. How do you see that process making a positive impact on kids? Now, I I, I got an, I, I got my own answer because I know how important that is. But like, how do you see this? Because to me, I think a question a lot of times is that we don't ask when we're doing our own professional learning, how is this actually going to end up impacting kids? Like how will this actually improve learning in their school? So how do you see that book and, and what you wrote and what you shared? How do you see that positively impacting students in schools? I, I think it's something that would be, um, be that kind of that guide on the side, that roadmap to being able to, because right now they're still trying to find out who they are. Um, still trying to discover things and see where they kind of fit and where they're going to make their mark in the world. And this will be able to help them understand. It's, it's, it's things that I wish I would have had to, when I was going through things in life or whatever, I didn't know, again, we didn't know what certain things were called. We knew we were always doing it, but now that it's got a name to it and being able to, you know, self-manage, um, being able to regulate your emotions and, here's some ways when you're feeling a certain way or you might be feeling angry or whatever, here's some ways to calm yourself down and um, how to um, contend with relationship skills. And they have things with them um, that they've got all the pressures of all the social media right. um, where they, you know, and we try to tell the kids it's not the number of likes and all, if you're posting just a post to get likes in it, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. This would just be to, be your authentic self. I, I just think it's something that'll kind of give them that that resource that they will need to to know what areas they continue to grow on. Because again, it's called becoming the change. It's 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 an it's an evolution of being our best selves. It's a process. It's never going to be complete because whether they're in middle school and going to high school, it's going to change. It's going to change from high school to college because they're going to be at different parts. They're going to have different experiences that social awareness of kids that are different from who they are. They, they view things differently or have different beliefs or whatever, but you still might have those differences, but you still respect one another. You mm -hmm. still value that person. It's, I, I, that's where I think this book could really help them is they, they can refer to it time and time again. And it's a, it's a book that will never go away. You know, it's, it's always going to be there because you're always looking to be your best self. Well, I, I read something just, oh, geez, it was like this last week and it was mm -hmm. talking about how 
we deal with certain situations and the one argument or the one thing that was said and i'm totally blowing this but like i can't remember where i read it was instead of saying that person made me angry it would be say that person did this thing and i i chose to be angry because of it and then asking yourself did you becoming angry help the situation mm -hmm. and and as as much as i love that advice i also i'm like okay, could i actually do that like could i stop myself and i think that's you know a lot of times um i've talked about this a ton we often give our best advice to others but don't take it ourselves right, right. that's a great strategy for kids but do you actually as an adult do it yourself i don't know if i could do that sometimes even though I, when i read it, i was like that actually really would help sometimes in situations so that's why you know i'm excited about this book and i think it can make a big impact is really you know how do we do these things ourselves look internally and then we're so much better to help others um yeah. through the external journey so dan thanks so much for being on the podcast um everybody check out dan's blog podcast and his book becoming the change five essential elements to being your best self uh i hope you have a wonderful day and hopefully our paths cross uh face to face Absolutely. Uh, very yeah. soon so i know i'm um, speaking at a couple events in florida so hopefully i'll see you there but maybe we'll go yeah. to a bucks game next year i don't know if you're a town okay that game. sounds great and remember you're a Floridian, so uh, yeah so that's right that's right hey everyone thanks for listening i hope you have a wonderful day dan thanks for your time thank you so much 